Hello and thanks for coming to check this out. So here is our latest After Effects reproduction using Apple Motion 5. The source animation is by this motion designer, maybe pronounced Amar, and there's a link in the description to go and check that out at their product page at the Envato Market. So I chose this one to do uh, to try and work out how the center uh, circles were done with motion. But most of all, I've been looking for uh, the right one to demonstrate how to use sequence text and overshoot behavior combined. And that's pretty much what I want to focus on with this walkthrough. So the project file is ready for you to download. And we will go through each element step by step. But I'm mainly going to focus on the central circles feature and the text animation. The other elements in this reproduction are covered quite well with the other After Effects reproductions that we've done, so I'll just remind you of the links to go and check those out. Alright then, let's jump into the project file and see how this is all put together. So here we are in the project file, this is what's ready for you to download. We'll get started then with these first elements here, these radial bursts of lines. So you'll find them in this group here, radial bursts. These groups are image mask sources. We'll get to them soon. So we want to open up this group here, shooters. And we'll see one, two, three replicators uh, each. Radial burst is one replicator. I did the large one first, and then I just duplicated it and changed a few things to get the medium and small one. So here is the source for the large replicator. You can see in the inspector here, it's just a line with the first and last point offset, keyframe to right on and then right off. So that's been replicated to give us the large replicator. The replicator itself is, you can see 32 points, but we can only see groups of three and then just this group of two. So that's because there's an image mask applied and here is the source for the image mask. So the mask is set to add so anything inside the fans will be revealed and anything outside of them will be hidden. The replicator itself is keyframed to expand out by the radius here. You can see it's starting at 181.6 and then just expanding out to 320.4.5. To give us the blooming effect. So as I mentioned I've just started with the large replicator then I've duplicated the replicator. I've duplicated the source and changed a few things around in the geometry tab and then I've done the same with this one, duplicated it and changed a few things around to give us the very small one. And they've just been repositioned on the z-axis to give us the final burst group here. There is a fade out behavior applied just over the last five frames to smooth out the end of that animation and a soft focus filter has been applied. Uh, only cosmetic to try and get as close to the After Effects graphic appearance as possible. So that is the first element, these radial bursts. So let's have a look now at how the center feature was done with these rings. In this group here, center rings, that's where the center elements are. So you can see there's a replicator and here is the source. So 
So this is the element that has been replicated in the inspector. You can see it's similar to the uh, burst source. It's a shape with the first point and last point offset animated there so that it writes on and off. So if you have downloaded the project file, you can jump in and see what was done to get it looking as close as possible to the After Effects animation. Let's go through and do another one now, just roughly, so you can see the steps. So I'll start by adding a circle and in the inspector I'll turn off the fill and add an outline there and then I'll just come in and center it so now with the circle selected I'm going to choose convert to points then this point here I'm going to choose open curve and then delete it so now I have a semicircle I'll come to the beginning of the project and drop the last point offset down to zero and add a keyframe there I could use the right on behavior with a custom speed to do this I'll come to 25 frames and bring that back to 100% now at the fifth frame I'll set a keyframe for the first point offset and bring the playhead to 30 frames one second in this project and bring that up so there we go roughly that is our replicator source so the next step then is to replicate that using L on my keyboard. I want this replicator to be a line with seven points. And I want them to sit on top of each other. So here, the X start point at zero and the X end point two at zero. So to spread them out toward the center here, I'll come down here to scale end and drop that down and then I will come to angle end and adjust that to spread them out and then I will apply uh, angle randomness so that it's not such a uniform spiral so now we have something like okay like this and that's the beginning so the next step is to flip it around and I want to pay attention to where this outermost ring is and I'm gonna turn on the guides so with the playhead at the start I'll select the replicator and make sure this is animating from here all right so if we follow that source that we did uh, if we took this to represent the source it's writing on and off in that semicircle arc but we want it to flip around now so i'll grab the replicator and come into properties i'll add a keyframe on the z rotation parameter there and at one second, 30 frames. Turn that around 180 degrees from there to there. And that is just roughly how I made the center rings feature. Okay then, so let's now take a look at the logo group. The logo elements are all in this group here. 
So we have uh, this base shape bouncing in using overshoot on the scale. There's the overshoot behavior there. And the Apple Motion logo is uh, masked to be revealed by the base shape. There's the image mask and there's the base shape as its source. Just be sure to turn the base shape back on when you apply the mask as uh, Motion will turn, turn off the mask source by default. And the Apple Motion logo is coming in on an overshoot behavior as well and rotating. So it finishes here, you can see it finishes the rotation just before the overshooting begins. So using the overshoot behavior was key to reproducing this part of the animation. I won't go into lots of detail about overshoot here. I covered it in a previous guide. So if you want to go into overshoot in more detail, check out the link in the description. So the next element then is this shape spill here. So in this group here, shapes, these are the sources for this emitter. And this is another thing that I've posted a guide for before. So if you want to get a lot of detail uh, and learn how to make these shape emitters, uh, shape spills and shape confetti, shape bursts, then check out the link in the description. So that covers all of the uh, elements up to the tagline. So then we get to the tagline here, and this is the next part that I want to focus on and show you more about how it was done. And as I said, I've been looking for a chance to pass this on. So we're going to look at how to make this animation using sequence text and apply overshoot to that. Let's go through how to do that text animation step by step. I'll grab the text tool, enter some text. In the inspector, center the alignment, and I'll just increase the font size here, make it easy to see. The font is Ubuntu, and that is the same font as the After Effects animation. If you want to grab a copy of that, there's a link in the description for you. All right, we'll come to Properties and reset the X and Y position. Then come to Behaviors and grab Text Animation Sequence Text. Then I'll bring my playhead to one second in the timeline and hit O on my keyboard to trim it there. Here in parameters, I'm going to add position and grab that Y position parameter that we just added and choose add parameter behavior overshoot. And make sure that overshoot behavior is trimmed to the same duration there, one second in the timeline. Okay, then I'm going to grab this option here, sequencing, and choose from keyframes so that the overshoot will influence each glyph rather than just the entire text element as a whole. All right, let's tell this overshoot what to do. We'll have the start value at minus 200, ramp duration at 25, cycles at 1, and the spread at 8. So now if I scrub through, you can see that the glyphs are following the rules of the overshoot instructions in sequence through the sequence text, but each glyph is visible until it has its turn. And that is one of the quirks of using overshoot with sequence text in motion at the moment. And also I think it applies to sequence replicator as well. So what can we do? Um, first, I want to share with you a tip that was shared at one of the Motion 5 Facebook groups. The tip comes from Anatoly. He shared with us a method to keyframe opacity to get around this. So let me pass that on to you. So Anatoly's method is to grab the opacity and add that then 
at the beginning of your sequence text, make sure the playhead's at the start, we'll drop opacity to zero, add a keyframe, and then move the playhead one frame forward, add another keyframe, and bring opacity back to 100, then bring the playhead to the end of your sequence text duration, and add another keyframe. So that is one thing that you can do. For our After Effects reproduction, in this situation, we want to also animate the scale of each glyph. So in our situation, we don't need to use the opacity trick, but I want to pass that on to you. So if you ever get stuck with using overshoot and sequence text in the future, you'll know what to do. Um, we don't need to use it here. We're going to animate scale, and animating scale is another way that you can jumpstart the glyphs to do what you want visually. Okay, so let's remove opacity. Let's add scale. Bring the playhead to the start. Drop scale to zero. Add a keyframe. Bring the playhead to the end of our sequence text duration. Bring scale back to 100%. And that is how we get our tagline animation. Okay, so uh, that is all for this project file walkthrough. That is another After Effects reproduction done with Motion 5. I think this time round we get something very, very similar to the source animation. Okay, I hope this is useful for you for your future projects. Thanks for visiting and thanks for watching.